Fine. So either um, Simon ran out of genres and categories or, or had other plans for me or wanted to think in a slightly different way, <laughs> <laughs> which I've attempted to do. So I, I, I've kind of taken the, uh, the theme of discourse and attempted to think about the, the specific questions. Which tools and approaches, which works and genres, which, for whom, with what intentions, what do we need, what's missing. And obviously we might take discourse uh, <coughs> in several ways. I'm, I'm, I'm s suggesting it might be useful in my, my, my first definition of it, essentially derived from, um, apart from Simon's own writing, his uh, 86th chapter where he introduced uh, oral and mimetic discourse. Importantly, of course, as part of a, of a, a then important and growing trend to, to, to be concerned with analysis that put the listener listening to music at, in the centre of things. So by my, 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 my first uh, sense of discourse is that it's a, a potentially useful way of putting together, comparing, consolidating a whole range of different analytical approaches <coughs> that put the listener in the the listener listening in the center of things. So this of course could, could be uh, Schaeferian theory, spectromorphological theory, it could be embodied cognition work, it could be hard science into perception, um, it could be theories to do with uh, gesture, um, how we how we chunk bits of time. Um, it could be semiotic or semantic. Um, so the, 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 the person listening involved in some kind of um, perceptual and possibly also interpretative uh, act. And of course the broader, the broader definition of discourse, um, uh, our own uh, activities today, com communication with and around electroacoustic music not exclusively mediated by language, other things, um, uh, audio only games, um, tools to tools to visualize sound with, uh, software, analytical software, even part of the, the discourse of electroacoustic music. So what what is the connection between discourse in these two senses? And I can see the, the method in Simon's uh, programming here because really this, the central thing that I want to see uh, is, or discuss, or move on, is the, the, the practical ways in which we might account for our subjective experience of music within our kind of tradition of, um, or our, our current state of state of the art in terms of broader musical discourse, in terms of where, where we've got to with analysis. So I thought it might be useful to, to ask, uh, actually, directly and rhetorically uh, of us here today and in general as a, as a community, who are we? Because I think in part, Lee and Simon's questions, uh, in part, some of those questions might be partially answered. I think about who we are. Um, so I'm kind of working on the assumption today that people that aren't professional music music analysts are in the in the majority in the room, and we all have possibly a series of kind of interacting and complex other interests in analysis. So what 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 assumptions might we make in in, in terms of discourse and assumptions that we bring to analysis and, and approaches of analysis that directly relate to what we want from analysis uh, from the point of view of teaching, composing, performing, promoting music, putting on concerts, um, being concerned with um, music appreciation and so on and so forth. And further, uh, what, what, what Asking who are we in terms of um, in terms of the, the kind of non-trivial implications of, of, of what what we do what, and what our contract dictates we should be doing, um, and and st starting to think about the, 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 the uh, kind of the, the practical ways in which we might respond to several people now who've said who mentioned the term interdisciplinary. Um, 
Russell's was, of course, uh, taking, taking the, the first sense of discourse, this might actually relate to, to, to real, uh, a real listener in, involving works such as Delalande or uh, some of Lee's work, re reception theory, um, a theoretical listener or an imaginary listener. I think in terms of interdisciplinary, we, 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 we need to be aware of imaginary analysts as well in the sense of, um, I'm sure we can all intellectually see how semiotics might offer us certain things, or anthrop anthropology might offer us certain things, um, but there aren't uh, necessarily a whole bunch of people from within those specific disciplines um, beating a path to our door. So I think that's a, that's a kind of serious issue. Um, So, also, where, where are we in terms of broader discourse about music? And what I'm really thinking about here is, is uh, our kind of sense of the 20th century, the kind of critiques of how academics wrote about music and analysed music, and critiques of how, how why. In terms of meaning and, and, and the subjective, uh, there seems to be a, a, a obviously a very significant um, divergence between how journalists wrote about music and how people reviewed concerts and how people spoke of their own experience in terms of meaningfulness and possibly some of the fluffiness that Andy referred to in terms of um, description of 19th century music and so forth. And also, of course, the critique, the, the essentially mus musicology critiquing itself, the so-called new musicology. Um, So the idea of, of, of interrogating and deconstructing re re received notions of r relationships between musicians and listeners and all of the implications that that had for how analysts approached analyzing music. So I'm thinking here of, of things like beyond structural listening, deconstructed variations and so that, that kind of work. That, and that kind of work that actually in part also made analysis real in, in pointing to real people, social people with their own motivations analysing music. So the kind of analysis of analysis, yeah. And, and this, is full of, this is full of paradoxes. Because um, as some of you know, uh, I, 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 a personal paradox for me in, in, in terms of all of these, these uh, large historically charged issues is the sense in which I musically still derive a lot from various musical modernisms, but intellectually I might be rather aghast at some of the underpinnings of where those things came from. And in terms of the current state of the art, and, uh, as recently as uh, June, pleasurable ICMC in Huddersfield, <coughs> uh, we heard uh, a paper that I think is uh, from Taiho Kong Park that's kind of still quite ubiquitous, but essentially the thrust of it was that um, we really need to focus on the objective. And things like new software tools we must be pointing to things that are demonstrably there. Um, and of course meaning is important, and of course experience is important, but somehow if we systematically get all of the objective stuff right, we will, we will lead through some process I don't quite understand towards the experiential and, and the, the sense of music. So my question really, and I, and I don't have an answer, but I, it might be, it might be a, helpful, a helpful way to formulate things is, given all of this and where we're at in terms of musical discourse and our, our position within broader musical discourse, it seems to me that we, we have a, 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 an intellectual terrain where actually to, to, put the, to, to, to put the subjective into subjective at the centre of things isn't, isn't particularly controversial from a kind of philosophical point of view, from discourse from a whole range of other disciplines. But why do we, why do we ultimately seem to be going round in circles in terms of the, pra the practical ways in which we might be developing analytical strategies for electroacoustic music. It's the, ch the challenge I want to point to. In terms of the uh, 
this has already been alluded to, the, the, the kind of slightly hesitant liberal approach to um, eclectic liberal approach to all of these different genres and categories. I think um, there's, it seems to me there's a, there's a, a paradox in the, the, the important part of discourse in its first sense, which puts the listener and listening in the centre of things from an analytical point of view. Maybe gets problematized if we if we if we do venture off into into uh, installation art and other other things where inevitably other kinds of culturally specific factors and experience and knowledge are going to be more important. So maybe there's a sense in which we, we're kind of moving <coughs> beyond listening. And in fact, if we if we look at some of the categories of, of today, they actually make some of the uh, discourse around music, the postmodern discourse around music and listening and analysis actually immediately redundant. They can va vaporise into thin air. Moving to, Moving to my final comment. On the other hand, putting all of these things together, I wonder, <coughs> I wonder if um, trying to get to the bottom of, 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 of what the really important facets of these various practices <coughs> are that are, dis that are specific and distinctive some, somehow might, might point to the most important places to be looking in terms of specific, or specific analytical methods. And ultimately, if, if, if I, I suppose what I'm saying is I, I wonder to what extent we, we uh, have kind of whole series of, 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 of time delays and vestiges of, 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 of things historically whereby we still have, we're still kind of hung up on certain ideas of analysis um, and actually <coughs> attempting <coughs> this on the face of it rather outrageously ambitious kind of you know, collection of, of practices offer us a chance to engage in a really quite <laughs> radical rethink of uh, Stopped. Thank you. <laughs>